Oh, I've been extremely busy, but extremely fulfilled as well. Um, my name is Jamaik. Um, I'm an entrepreneur first and actor second. That's how I introduce myself now. <laughs> At first, I, I, I wish I listened to my instincts more. Um, I've had, um, um, I've had um, businesses that I created that um, at some point, my instinct told me that I needed to pay more attention. I needed to be physically um, on, on hands-on. I needed to, you know, scrutinize and, and probably research a lot better the kind of hands I was hiring to take my passion and my, my resources um, out there to the world. And at the end of the day, I didn't pay attention. I went with my emotions mostly and just trusted people. And every time I was getting disappointed, um, after I had my son, I made a conscious, a very conscious, um, decisive eff effort um, to say that from now on, I take over the realms and, um, of my business life. Um, I will create it, I'll sit on it, I'll nurture it, I'll watch it grow. And before I hand it over, it will have been run at a pace where, um, give or take, I'll still be in control of it. And I think that's what I'm doing. I've done with our last two platforms. I feel woefully many times. <laughs> so, um, of late, I've pretty much em em embraced um, the philosophy of um, Winston Churchill. Um, I think he embodied the total experience of what um, my business life is about. Um, he said something along the lines of a succession of failures. It's what success is about without a loss of enthusiasm. The losses, the, the failures, um, along the line, you know, affected me emotionally, but never affected my confidence. It never affected my enthusiasm to try again. Um, not suicide in the sense that I only take my life. <laughs> I think I need to, I need to totally establish that. I'm, um, I'm not saying I'm by any means superior, but um, I think I have a pretty tough mental disposition. Um, I'm not, I was not suicidal at that point. I just vowed certain things like, you know what, whatever I make sits in that bank. Whatever I make stays in my pocket. I'm going to stop taking unnecessary risks. I'm just going to enjoy my life and keep working and keep my head down. It's still there. It's still happening. The, the fact is still the fact that, well, it's not everybody that can afford me, um, truth to be told. Um, you... you <laughs> You have, um, people are working day in, day out. But then, uh, depends on what label and what, uh, you know, what you stamp on your art, your, your gift, is entirely your prerogative. Um, where I stamped it, um, it's not, I'm, I will not call myself the highest paid actor in Africa by a long shot. There are just certain conditions that come with taking me on a job. And I dare say that it's not everybody that can meet them. Um, it's not about having the money. A lot of platforms that have money come. I've made about 11 films, you know, right this, the 12th one, the 12th film this year. And everybody that came and approached me had their structure were put together. It has to be professionally set out. Yeah, um, the, 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 um, the scripts have to be thought provoking. It has to be career propellers that, that critiques can look at. I understand that good work has been done. Our projections fell short, and it's not because we're not hardworking enough, or we're not creative enough, or we're not on the right platform. Uh, I think it fell short because the government did not do their part. You know, certain laws and degrees that I thought by now would be promulgated you know, to protect the actor, um, the, the, the work is, is churning out, and the atmosphere in general, the ambience of, of business that's been done, it's not been met. Um, the cinemas are still having a field day, um, putting out whatever steep conditions they put out so that people have to exhibit their films through these forums, um, through these mediums, I beg your pardon. Um, some of the so-called um, cliques and, 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 and me, what you, they refer to as the Eastern um, um, uh, Mafia, yeah, their, their powers have been um, mitigated to a great extent, but they still exist. Um, there's still a great deal of pri piracy going on with the finished product. Uh, so, and there's no proper security apparatus that man and monitor 
and, and, and take punitive measures against these people. I never feel pressure. I'm just designed that way. <laughs> yeah, thank God for it. Um, because I'm on and off, I'm, I have various interests. I have pockets of interest that I've created in so many stratas of my life that one endeavor is not enough to pressurize me. Anytime I feel pressure, I leave. I go do my business. Anytime my business gives me pressure, I leave. I go travel the world, you know, and do my extracurriculum activities and then, and then you know, rejuvenate properly, recharge myself, reimbue myself with new strength and ideologies, and, uh, and then come back with novel ideas. Anytime my personal life, I'm under pressure, I, I, I go to another, I think that's how everyone should live, to create stratas of interest, uh, as diverse as possible, um, as dissimilar as possible, so that um, it will imbue you with new strength every time you feel choked or, or saturated with one segment of your life. And that's how it is with me. I, know, I never feel pressure. I'm willing to be totally emotionally and classically intelligent with the everything I approach. I've, I'm a proponent for following everything in life with grace, elegance, and thoughtfulness. The part I totally refuse to adhere to certain codes of conduct or antiquity is social media. I will not be the person that will visit public pages, not bloggers, not social media influencers, not colleagues, nobody. I studiously mind my business. It's created mysteries, created a certain you know, aura about me that I really enjoy personally. Nobody knows how I come and go. They just know I go and I come. It's a grace of God. At the end of the day, because I'm not in a public forum and I don't do social, I don't do public social events. I assure you, you've not seen me in any social event, have you? I never do it. Um, I came into this industry and I overran my mileage in a sense and retreated and decided to take it one day at a time and remove myself from any scene that one way or the other would make me vulnerable to certain things that I know that I cannot control. Keep your love private, man. <laughs> that was such an exhibitionist. <laughs> love is, trust me, is one of those secrets. I, I've been through, and I'll tell you the thing about love too, all, every time I was an exhibitionist with with my show of love, I, was, I wasn't in love. <laughs> That's the sad part. Whoa, I'm going to get crucified for this one. <laughs> but I was not in love. I, wasn't, I was playing out a part of me that was in love with love. <laughs> so, it's such an exhibition of insecurities. Um, I'm a happy guy. <laughs> I'm extremely happy. You can't achieve without love. You know, um, I have love around me all the time. My sisters love me, my son loves me. Someone out there definitely loves me. Uh, I love myself. Everybody knows I love myself. That, there's no doubt about that one. They can doubt everything about me. Nobody will doubt the fact that I love myself a lot. Uh, I just had to teach myself the last five years to love other things and other people more than I love myself. So there's no doubt about that. I think self-love is very potent. It's, it makes you an achiever before you even make an attempt at anything. When there's a need, when there's a default of some sort, when there's, there's a glitch in the system, you create something that, w that will solve that problem. If you can dream it, you can create it, or will sell it. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.